Greetings, pen pals. I have another very large, brand new acrylic pen from Ranga in India today. This is the Ranga Ganesha. Um, this is only the second acrylic pen that uh, I've had from Ranga. All my other ones have been ebonite, um, but there is something very, very special about this pen as well, which we'll get to um, shortly. Size-wise, we definitely need to talk about that. This is a huge pen. So first off, we're going to compare it to a Lamy Safari and a Pilot Metropolitan like we always do. And as you can see, in every dimension and by any standard, this pen is monstrous. It dwarfs, um, it dwarfs uh, both of these uh, pens uh, by a substantial amount. This is a decently heavy pen too, even though it's all acrylic because it's just so big, weighs in at 43 grams. Um, let's just get another sense of scale here. We'll compare it to some other Ranga pens. Okay, so here is our Ranga Ganesha that we're looking at today. Here it is compared to a Ranga Majestic. It's, it's a bit bigger than the Ranga Majestic, and the Ranga Majestic is a massive pen. Um, here it is compared to the Ranga Splendor. Um, again, it's very similar in overall form factor to the Ranga Splendor, has the same sort of conical ends, also an acrylic pen, very, very similar. The overall shape of the barrel is, is, is pretty much the same. However, it is yet still bigger than the Ranga Splendor. To look at it in terms of a more moderately sized Ranga pen, this is the model 4CS. Let's put the, uh, 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 Pilot Metropolitan back in the mix just so you can get some scale here. So the Ranga 4CS is a big pen, um, still quite a bit bigger than the Pilot Metropolitan, but as you can see, it is the, it, the, um, the Ganesha and the Splendor, for example, absolutely dwarf it. So by any measure, make no bones about it, this is a large, large, large pen. We can also compare it in size to some sort of big flagship pens from well-known manufacturers to give you another sense of scale. So again, right in the middle is our Ranga Ganesha. This is a Mont Blanc 149. This is a very big pen by any standard. And you can see the Ganesha absolutely dwarfs it as well as it dwarfs the Pelican uh, M1005. Again, a very large flagship size pen. And again, um, uh, makes these pens look positively tiny. Okay, so I think we've covered the size aspects of this pen pretty well. In terms of the overall shape, again, it's uh, it's just a really, really nice pen. It's um, The barrel comes out and bulges in the middle and then tapers back down again, and you have conical, virtually identically shaped, but not identically sized, beautiful black conical finials on either end. They do make this in a few colors. I chose this really nice ivory uh, color, but they do make it in a couple of other colors. The clip is uh, nothing special, but it works well and is functional and um, uh, doesn't detract really from the rest of the pen. Really, really uh, nice, uh, really nicely uh, made. Again, all acrylic. Uh, most of the other Ranga pens, with the exception of the Splendor that I have, are uh, ebonite. Now we can open it up. It is a screw to unturn. It only takes three quarters of a turn, which is really, really nice. And then it reveals what is really the spectacular part of this pen. This is a number eight titanium Bach nib. So this is really just a really spectacular uh, size nib. Let's, let's do a little bit of nib size comparison so you can get a sense of just how big this nib actually is. Okay, so here we have the number eight Bach titanium nib that is on the uh, Ganesha. Uh, and just to give you a way of comparison, this is a number six Bach titanium nib. So you can see number six nib is a pretty big nib, but this nib again dwarfs it. Nibs that are comparable in size to this number eight nib are the nib that's on the Mont Blanc 149, very similar size. And although it's quite a bit different shape and geometry, the nib on the Pelican uh, uh, M1000 series pens are uh, similar in, in size as well. But so we're talking about a very, very, very big, big, big nib on this pen. So like I said, the nib, it's a Bach titanium nib. This one is in medium. It's not labeled as such in medium. It's got the Bach logo on it. It says Bach, it's got some scroll work and it uh, says Titan, which is what they put on their titanium uh, nibs. Um, 
One thing that's really, really nice about the number eight Bach nib units, now Bach nibs come in a unit, so you could unscrew this unit and replace it with, say, a, um, a, a another Bach number eight nib. So for example, um, I have this other Ranga pen, which has a uh, number eight Bach nib in 18 karat gold in broad. I could unscrew these and swap them because they're interchangeable units. Um, but one thing that's really nice is um, they do on the number eight nibs give you a ebonite feed, which is which is really really uh, nice to see, um, and uh, looks really nice, writes really well, as we will see. So this is a really nice number eight uh, size nib. In terms of filling system, this is cartridge converter or eyedropper. Um, it does. Um, uh, have quite a bit of th nice fine threads here so, and you could put some silicone grease and an eyedropper this no problem although this does seem like uh, it's two pieces in my leak it is actually not the inside of the barrel is one solid uh, piece and this uh, finial is attached so you can definitely eyedropper this um, and uh, it does come with a uh, Schmidt converter um, or you can simply remove the converter and eyedropper it if you so chose. I chose not to in this particular instance, but you just as easily uh, could. I have several other Ranga pens that are eyedroppered and they work just, just fine. Again, really, really nice pen. Now, in terms of posting, it does post. It is really big posted, even for me. Um, so although I have posted this on occasion, I've mostly been writing with this unposted, if you could believe it, um, again, because I'm a huge fan of posting. But again, a really, really nice, super, super um, uh, cool pen. But you may be wondering, how does it write? You're going to see that right now. Okay, what we're writing with here is a Ranga Ganesha. And this has a, a Bach titanium nib. In medium. And this just writes great. This is, uh, I would say, about average wetness, maybe slightly above average. Uh, titanium nibs have a slightly different feel to them. You could, they definitely, to me at least, have a distinct uh, feel. Um, you can get a tiny, and I do mean tiny, bit of bounce and flex. It does the nib does feel bouncy, but it's not flexy, so it's kind of kind of hard to describe in that in that respect. But again, super super nice. Again, I wouldn't call it a flex nib, but you do definitely get. Uh, a bit of bounce, uh, a bit of bounce here, but again, it writes very smooth. Um, makes a sort of, at least to my ear, a distinct sound. Again, the sound of the titanium nib is just different to me, uh, which is strange because it's the tipping material, which is touching the paper, not necessarily the titanium. But again, I always feel these titanium. Both the number six and the number eight titanium nibs that I have, to me at least, have a distinct sound on the paper. That's uh, a little bit different, but maybe I'm just. Uh, just imagining things. But again, writes really well. In terms of reverse writing, uh, and it's actually quite good and quite smooth, and I would say it takes that down only a bit really, maybe to a fine uh, at best, not really an extra fine or anything like that, but it does uh, reverse write quite quite well and it flows pretty nicely. So um, all in all, a really, really, really nice writer. Um, uh, again, nice pen. You get the ivory, in this particular case, you get the ivory material. You get the contrasting black section and the black finials on the end. I think it looks really, really nice. Um, uh, one thing you do have is this flared out section which does mate with a sort of ledge inside the cap to keep it sealed pretty nicely. So all in all, it's a pretty nice pen. It's a girthy pen. So this is a big pen, a girthy pen, etc. So if you really have to like large pens and be comfortable writing with them because this, this is just a beast. But if you feel you can tame the beast, um, it is a really, really super pen, and I'm really, like all my pens from Ranga, 
uh, I'm really uh, happy with it. It's actually probably worth uh, taking a minute to see how this pen is packaged. All right, every pen I've ever got from Ranger comes in some variant of the same box. It's a very nice quality box with a snap lid, various uh, lab types of Ranga pen labeling. Sometimes they're not labeled at all, but they're all sort of uh, this sort of pretty much the same box. So the pen comes in here. Um, this one did include an ink dropper, which is nice. Uh, on the pens where you're not getting a Bach or a Schmidt nib, for example, where you're getting uh, the, the sort of Ranga nibs or the Indian made nibs, they very often give you an extra nib and feed. Not in this case, because I have the Bach nib in here, but uh, sometimes they do. But one thing they always do is include a bonus freebie pen. Um, this is one from a brand that I do not have before. It's called Camlin. Um, I did a video uh, about a year or so ago of pens I've got for free over time. I've gotten quite a bit of new pens for free in that interim, so I may be doing another one at some point. But these are typically student grade Indian eyedropper pens that actually pretty much always work quite, quite well. So I've always been universally happy with the free pens that they give. So it's a nice little bonus goodie that they give. If you're interested in um, contacting Ranga to order a pen, um, here's the, you could just, um, you could just freeze the frame right uh, here, and here's all their contact information that you need to uh, to uh, to know about. Um, so that is it for the packaging of uh, this uh, this pen. So all in all, I'd say this is definitely a pen that I really like. Speaking of liking, I think it'd be great if you all could please like, share, comment, and subscribe. That would be just fantastic. Um, I think that's about it for this pen. Uh, let's talk about this ink now for a minute. Okay, folks, so this ink is Noodler's. Blue black. So this is sort of a, one of Noodler's standard inks. It's a blue black that definitely leans a little bit to more sort of towards the greeny side so it's to me to my mind it's a it's a bit uh on the on the greenish side uh here's uh, our noodler's blue black here's another blue black from noodles it's called the noodles air core blue black and as you can see um i they're both sort of dark for blue black inks and they i think they both definitely lit definitely skew a little bit green. For example, if you compare it to Pilot Blue Black, obviously, which is much, much, much um, uh, bluer, uh, just as an uh, uh, example, or something like Pelican Blue Black, which is, which is much, much lighter in, uh, in color. Like all the Noodleless inks, it comes in this three ounce bottle and is quite, uh, quite economical. I think they get about 12 or 13 dollars for this, so it's a it's actually a pretty, pretty good deal. And this is not a limited edition anyway. It's definitely, it's part of Noodle's standard product line. And you can pretty much get this anywhere and it's been available for, uh, for years. So like I said, pretty, pretty nice uh, ink. Um, definitely a darker and somewhat greener uh, blue-black in terms of how uh, blue-blacks uh, blue blacks go. That's what it looks like on this Rhodia paper. Let's take a quick look at what it looks like on Tomoe River paper. So like we said, this is uh, Noodler's blue-black. And this is on Tomoe River paper. So that is, uh, that is what it looks like. Uh, it doesn't look that much different on the Tomoe River than on the Rhodey. You do get a little bit of shading color variation, not a lot, but uh, again, all in all, pretty, pretty nice uh, ink. Um, I think that will just about do it for this week. I certainly hope you enjoyed watching this video because I sure enjoyed making it. And as always, until we see each other again, have a great day. Bye-bye.